Hey, so before we start this video, please, please, please check out the Black Lives Matter links in the description. It's really important to educate yourself, sign petitions, donate, and vote. Thank you. Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you my violin warm up and my tips for warming up yourself. I hope you enjoy. All right, so I'm gonna give you five different things that I do in my everyday warm-up routine. I've been doing this specific routine for months and I think that it has really worked for me and has really helped my practice and to prevent me from being injured or being really sore after practicing. The five categories of my warm-up routine are stretching, tuning, daily exercises, fingerboard geography, and sight reading. Number one, stretches. This is probably the singular most important thing that you can do in your everyday warm-up routine. If you don't listen to any of the rest of this video, please just at least take away this. Stretching is the most important thing you can do because it helps prevent injury. Now these are fairly basic stretches. By no means is this an extensive list of stretches that are physician certified and musician certified. These are things that I've learned over time from teachers and other programs that I have been to. I find that whenever I stretch before my practice sessions, I always feel less sore after practicing or not sore at all. My stretches are broken up into four different categories. The first category is arms. I do multiple arms arm movements that exercise different parts of the arms and just give them a really good stretch. I'm not very well versed in all of the fitness terms, so I'm gonna be using very basic terms that I learned or know for ease of understanding. So the first stretch is these whole arm circles. It's basically a swimming stroke. You want to do 15 of these in each direction, so forward and backward. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. You basically continue those until you get to 15. You do the same thing backwards. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, and so on. So I think that those are really great exercise because they really get your whole arms moving so that you can experience that full range of motion. And as a string player, you know that that's really important because you move your bow in a very complex and sometimes large motion. Continuing on with arm circles, now we have some smaller ones that come straight from the elbow. But just make sure that you go both directions. I do the same things for these 15 times in each direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the other direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. I do the same thing with my wrists. One, two, three, four, five. The other way. One, two, three, four, five. I've learned to do all these circular motions 15 times and in both directions, but obviously you can change it based on your personal needs and preferences. The next category of stretches that's really important is stretching your neck. As a string player, we sometimes tend to cramp our necks. So more circles, we're gonna do neck circles and we're gonna do about three in each direction. You're gonna hold your neck down like this and you're gonna go one, two, three. And then again, probably a little slower than I just did. One, two, and you could do more if you want, do those slower, whatever works for you. The next thing working the neck is you want to start with the non-playing side of your body. So for violinists and violists, that would be the right side. You want to grab your shoulder with this hand. You want to grab the side of your head with this hand. And then you want to stretch them apart, not too much, but until you feel a little bit of tension and just hold it there for 15 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six and so on. And then you do the other side in the same manner, but you want to be more careful with this side because this is, for me, this is my playing side. And you want to be more careful because often the side is more sensitive, can't go as far as the other side. So you want to be a little bit more gentle and you don't want to stretch it too far or else that can hurt your neck. So one, two, three, four, five, and so on. You do the same thing with both sides of your neck and that concludes the neck portion. All right, so the next category is legs. Next, I do a quad stretch with both of my legs for 15 seconds each. So basically, in case you don't know what a quad stretch is, that's basically just holding on to something and grabbing your leg and then putting your foot behind and then holding that for about 15 seconds and trying to push your leg back to get more stretch out of it. So one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And the same thing you want to do with your other leg. One, two, three, four, five, and so on. Okay, so now I've put it at an angle where you can only really see my legs and the wall because we're going to be doing a lower hamstring slash calf stretch. So you wanna be doing this on both sides. First, you wanna find a wall and put one of your feet towards the wall like so. And then you want to extend your other leg forward, kind of like you're in a lunge. And then you wanna feel the stretch back here, mainly in your calf and part of your hamstring. And you wanna stretch forward for 15 seconds. So one, two, three, four, and so on and then you want to do the same thing with the other leg and try to maintain your balance it can be hard for some people one two three four 
fun and so on. Now I'm no fitness guru, but I think that those stretches are actually really helpful. Next, I like to get out my violin and do something called the Donus Daily Dozen. Hey, just letting you know that I mispronounce Dunus this entire video. So know that it is Dunus and not Donus. Thank you. And I've been doing it for over a year now and I actually really like it. So I'll include a link about the Donus Daily Dozen in the description, but basically it's a finger tapping exercise. If you have medium to large hands, you would do this combination. So A flat on the G string, F on the D string, string, D on the A string, and B on the E string. And if you have smaller hands, the one change that I would make is you would do a B flat on the E string. Just if you're ready to stretch your pinky further, then you can go for a full B. You want to tap your fingers in certain combination patterns. You want to keep all of your fingers down and then do individual tapping motions with each finger five times. The goal with this exercise is to maintain that square finger shape. This is typically difficult with the first finger and the fourth finger because they tend to lose their shape when you lift them up. So you want to tap them each individually. One, two, three, four, five. 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 And then you want to start doing combinations. I go through every single combination possible with all the fingers. With each combination, I do five times alternating the fingers. One, two, three, four, five. I do five times with the fingers tapping simultaneously. So one, two, three, four, five. And I do that with every possible combination of fingers. It would be one and two, one and three, one and four, Two and three, two and four, three and four. And then what you would do is you would change your fingering so that it's opposite of what it was before. It's on the opposite strings. So basically, if you have medium to large hands, you would have D on the G string, G on the D string, C natural on the A string, F natural on the E string, or D flat if you have smaller hands. And you would just do those same combinations and focus on keeping your wrist pretty straight throughout all of this on your left hand and keeping those fingers curved when you lift them up. So the next big category of my warm-up routine is tuning. Now, whether you may or may not know about different tuning systems, I personally do a mix of equal temperament and Pythagorean tuning because I like being able to play fifths in tune and since I have smaller fingers, it's even harder to play fifths in tune. So I wanna make it a little bit easier for myself. In case you don't know what Pythagorean tuning is, it's a type of tuning that's built off of perfect fifths. Equal temperament is a little bit different because it is built on very specific intervals between notes. What this mix is, in relation to equal temperament, I tune my A string zero cents, so exactly equal temperament, 440 hertz, and then I tune my D string one cent down and my G string two cents down, and then I tune my E string one cent up. It's a better mix because in Pythagorean tuning, D is two cents away from equal temperament D, and G is about four cents away from equal temperament G. So the next category is daily exercises. I like to go through Simon Fisher books and every day find a new exercise to work on. For me, I love using Simon Fisher's warming up book. Every day I go through a new exercise within this book and these are all exercises that are meant to be short and easy. In case you don't have the warm-up book, I also recommend going through either the basics or the practice books for Simon Fisher. They often have really great exercises in both of them and there's always something that you can do daily that you can work on. The next thing that is part of my warm-up session is fingerboard geography. Now for those of you who aren't string players and don't quite know what I'm talking about, So I created this little combination box thing. It has a section for different string combinations, different finger combinations. It also has a section for pitch combinations and position combinations. So I don't use the pitches as of right now, although I think they're a good thing to have. Every single day I go through, I pick two strings, two fingers, and two positions. And then I try to find those notes in those positions on those strings with those fingers. I try to guess what those notes are. So I'll do a little demonstration. So I got E string, second finger eighth position so with my current knowledge I need to figure out what note that is and then try to shift out to that note without playing it and figure out where it is so I know that seventh position on the E string is the E harmonic so that's an E so eighth position is going to be an F and then the second finger in eighth position is going to be a G so I have to find that G I can figure out what seventh position is and then so seventh eighth position is gonna be F it's a half step that's a G we'll see if I get it right or not <laughs> Okay, I found it. I like to play a major scale based around that note. I also 
also wrote down different combinations of categories that you can use while using this sort of box thing. Now the next category is sight reading. Now this may sound like a scary thing that you remember from all of those Allstate auditions you did back in whatever year. And trust me, I did those too and those were also scary for me. I practice a different sight reading excerpt every single day and what I do is I pick out an old etude from when I was more of a beginner intermediate student and I would just sight read through the etude. And at this point I've forgotten most of them so it's more like sight reading for me anyways. You could also do this with old Suzuki pieces. I've previously gone through all of the exercises of the Kaiser etude book and I'm currently working on going through all of the exercises of the Wolfhart etude book. There's also this app slash website called Sight Reading Factory where you put certain requirements for a sight reading excerpt and then it creates one for you and gives you like 15 seconds or 30 seconds to look at it and then you have to play it and then once it senses that you're done playing it it will play back that same excerpt to you so that you can hear what you did right in terms of rhythm and intonation and such because that is the end of my warm-up session I normally do scales after this session every single day and I think that that's a pretty good way to start your practice session I hope you enjoyed this video I know I really enjoyed making it this is something that I'm really passionate about like I said I do these warm-ups every single day so I hope you gain something out of this whether you're a violinist or another type of musician or just a general person you know stretching every day is really important regardless of what you do for a living so I hope you took something away from this video please like and subscribe for more musician lifestyle related videos like this where I give you advice and tips on all things related to classical music follow my Instagram Julia Jacobson violin if you'd like to see more of my practice journey I hope you all have a wonderful day thank you for watching also please check out the links in my description in regards to black lives matter it's really important to keep this movement going and the best way to do that is to share knowledge with others and take action thank you